The next item is this Jelly Cat. Um, I always pick up Jelly Cat. It's one of those brands where I see it and I'm just like so excited to find it. They're just, I feel like they're really good quality and they typically sell well. Now, are all of them a big money bolo? No, but some of them can do pretty well. I ended up selling this one for a best offer of $50. The buyer was all in for $62.03 and I got it at a garage sale for 50 cents. So you got to love that. This is what the tag looks like if you are not familiar with it, but definitely uh, look them up if you see them. Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. Time reseller. $600 for a My Little Pony. Amazing, right? All right, let's get started. Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. Okay, I've got 22 big money bolos coming your way, items that I bought low and sold high. I'm gonna tell you where I got it, what I paid for it, and what it sold for. One item went for over $400, and there's a little bit of a story behind that one, so we're gonna get to that. So let's get started with some big money bolos. If you're new here, my name is Courtney, and bolo stands for be on lookout. So items to be on the lookout for, items you can hopefully buy low and sell high. All right, so the first item we're gonna talk about is this Sonic the Hedgehog Build-A-Bear. Um, I picked this up at a garage sale for $2 and sold him for $60. The buyer was all in for $78.50. So if you are not familiar with Build-A-Bear, you should definitely be looking them up because some of them can go for hundreds of dollars. I actually have a video on the top 10 Build-A-Bear to be on the lookout for. So if you missed that one, definitely go over to my channel and check it out. This one even had a little flaw right here and right here and still sold for $60. All right. The next item I sold is this vintage. It's um, like a model kit, a military model kit. Let me show you. Um, actually, this one, I'm trying to remember if it shows photos or not. Nope, this one does not. Another one did. But you can see here that it is new old stock, but the seal is broken. It's ripped. And this ended up selling for $52.50. The buyer was all in for $59.55. And I got this at a garage sale for $3. Um, when you're listing these model kits, you want to make sure that you put the model kit number if it has a kit number on it. Um, trying to remember where it was on this one. I think it was it's kind of in a weird spot right there 143 and this is made in france and i did put france in the title as well all right the next item i sold is this dandy bunny and it is animated it is super cute it has lights and sound its ears like flip flop around i love picking up animated plush it usually does well i typically price my animated plush on the higher side and wait for the right buyer. I did take a best offer of, or actually I think I had it on sale and it sold for $60 and the buyer was all in for $69.25 on this. And again, this came from a garage sale for $3. The next item is this gold star HP 90 cassette blank tapes. So whenever I find blank cassette tapes, I will pick them up. Um, I decided I had four of these and I decided to list them individually with a quantity um, choice. And this actually sold two separate times and it was a non-paying buyer. Uh, the feedback was low on both buyers, but you know, I don't always worry about that because I've had a lot of people with new accounts buy from me and they pay. This was the third time I had relisted it and somebody bought all four of them again. And I'm like, oh, here we go again, because I think they had zero feedback and they ended up paying. So that was fantastic. I ended up taking um, for all four of them $40 and then the buyer paid uh, the combined shipping. So they were all in for $51.17. And I picked these up for 50 cents each at a garage sale. The next item is this vintage Briar Palomino horse. Um, over on my uh, reseller testing Bolo products, I did a video on some Briar horses that I picked up. And I just, for me, Briar horses, I know some of them can go for crazy money, but they're so hard for me to identify. I feel like they look so similar. But anyway, I 
believe this was model number 57. If you can figure out the model number, definitely put that in the title. That's going to help. But I'm wondering if me doing that video over on that channel drove people to my store to look for these horses because I have almost sold out. I think I have two, maybe three left. So I don't know. That's just something I've been kind of thinking about. And anybody can do a YouTube channel with their um, products. You know what I'm saying? To drive business to their eBay store. Not necessarily like a channel like this where I'm teaching and helping you guys learn and I'm learning with you. Not that type of, this is literally me testing products. And I just did a video saying, oh, I got these briar horses and I showed them. And then people put in the comments um, if they knew which horse it was. And that's actually how I identified some of my horses. So anyway, just a little tip, maybe something you're interested in. I'm, I don't think I'm actually in that video. Um, I think it was just screenshots. I can't remember. But anyway, sold this guy for $59.20 and the buyer paid shipping. They were all in for $76.27. And I picked up a bunch of Briar horses. It was around the same time frame, And I just kind of sat them in my garage and forgot about them because I didn't want to look them up. And I think want to say this one was probably three to five dollars all right this star wars figure lot i picked this up at the goodwill in a bag of star wars items and i actually did this i listed these on my live listing show over on my reseller testing bolo products which i have not done forever and i apologize for you guys that come and watch that and hang out and list with me. I have just been crazy busy and I keep like, I'm going to do it tonight. I'm going to do it tonight. And then something comes up and I'm like, Oh, I need to do a video or I need to do this. I need to list, uh, you know, just always a million things to do. But, um, I am going to get back to that because I do need to list. But anyway, these star Wars figures, um, I can't remember. I want to say the whole bag was like seven bucks, maybe eight. I have a video on it. It's the video where I'm like reaching up for the bag. Um, and it's on this channel. And I ended up selling these for $45 best offer. And I'm going to say my cost of goods because I parted out the bag was anywhere from one to $3. And the buyer was all in for $62.81 on these. And they are pretty big. So this is what I like to do um, in my photos is I take a measuring tape and I actually put it in the photo to show people the measurements so they know exactly what they're getting because sometimes photos can be, you know, misleading. I listed a uh, Blaze in the Monster Machine. It was a little car. And I'm like, you know, if I was looking at that, I wouldn't be sure how big that car was. So, all right. My husband picked this one up from an estate sale. He went to an estate sale and they said, do you want all this jewelry for one price? I can't remember what the price was, um, but it was a bunch of stuff. And I was looking over his shoulder and I picked out 10, 15 things and I went ahead and listed those for him. This was one of the items. It's a Sabona Western bracelet, uh, horseshoe links, magnetic accents. And I don't know, it just kind of caught my eye. And I think if I remember correctly, I kind of priced it on the higher end. And this ended up selling for $37 plus shipping. The buyer was all in for $45.80. The next item, I picked this up at the Goodwill. I did pay up a little for her. I paid $7 for her and I ended up selling her for $50. The buyer was all in for $64.24. I just saw her and I thought she was beautiful. And the little baby on the back actually um, comes off. Let me see. I thought I showed a picture. Here's the tag on the inside. It's Dolls by Pauline. Yeah, here we go. How cute is that? I don't know. It just seemed like a good quality doll. And I just, I loved it. And I'm like, I'm getting it. I'm going to find a home for that doll. Um, but it's by applause and it's a mom and a baby. Super cute there. The next item is this jelly cat. Um, I always pick up jelly cat. It's one of those brands where I see it and I'm just like so excited to find it. They're just, I feel like they're really good quality and they typically sell well. Now are all of them a big money bolo? No but some of them can do pretty well. I ended up selling this one for a best offer of $50. The buyer was all in for $62.03 and I got it at a garage sale for 50 cents. So you gotta love that. This is what the tag looks like if you are not familiar with it, but definitely uh, look them up if you see them. 
Okay, this came from a garage sale. I want to say I paid a dollar each for these. Um, another item that sat and sat and sat in my uh, garage, and I listed these during a live show. And they're his and her mugs. And Belik, Belik, B E L L E E K, Irish porcelain mugs, his and hers. And these actually sold pretty quickly once I listed them, once I finally listed them. Let's see, uh, uh, $45. And the buyer was all in for $57.51 on those. And if you guys are new to the channel, I'm not big on breakables. I prefer to pick, uh, ship things that do not break. Uh, just because I feel like I overpack and I spend so much time on it. And then I, you know, always think, is it going to make it? So I just kind of stay away from breakables. So I was patting myself on the back for getting these listed. This next item is this vintage storyteller brooch, early Eskimo Turnbull Canada pin, copper signed. I got this at a thrift store. I paid 50 cents for it. It was amazing. And it's signed on the back. I just kind of wrote what it said. And I love the caliper. I use this to show the measurements. And these are really inexpensive. I got it on eBay. I want to say it was like 10 or $12 back when I bought it. Not expensive at all. And a really great tool for jewelry. Uh, let's see. I paid 50 cents for it. I sold it for a best offer of 75. The buyer was all in for 88.75. The next item I sold are these calico critters. I was at an estate sale and you know, those little totes, the little tote bags that you get. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think where you get them. Like at stores, they'll give you the little tote bags and their cloth. Well, I, it was full of these calico critters and these were not the new ones. These were vintage and I've sold quite a few, but I ended up parting them out. So I'm guessing I have a dollar or less in these. Sold these for $37.50. The buyer was all in for $45.72. And this is the mouse family. The next item I sold are these Santa Claus punch mug cup ceramic Christmas mid-century mugs from 1976. This is another item that I just put off listing. I think I listed this around the same time I listed those Irish mugs. Because again, breakables, putting it off. And when I do breakables, when I list them, I typically package them right then. That way um, they're packaged and boxed. And when it's time to ship, all I have to do is put a label on it. I ended up selling these for $65. The buyer was all in for $95.24. And I got those at a garage sale for $5. This item right here is absolutely amazing. And it had, let me see, the original packaging. So I was at a thrift store and this was a mystery. And I want to say it had $10 on it, but you couldn't open it. So I didn't know what I was getting. And um, yeah, definitely a bolo. Danbury Mint, it's the Bird Watcher's Christmas Wreath. Um, I think I still have the snowman left. And then I sold another one that was in this series. I ended up getting three of them. So $150 on this and the buyer was all in for $195.38, but really, really detailed. You, I mean, if I didn't have that styrofoam, I don't know how I would have shipped this because these birds are so delicate and the wings and the beaks and they're, it's just amazing. It's a beautiful piece. The next item is this Coda Pillar. Um, I have been selling these left and right. Um, not really, but I think this is my third or fourth one that I've sold. And I just listed another one. And I actually found another one recently at a garage sale, but it was not functioning property, properly. So I ended up getting rid of the this front part of the body, the head. And I parted out the pieces on the back. So you can definitely part these out and still make good money. I got this one at the Goodwill Bins and I sold it for $40.70. And the buyer was all in for $50.60. This is the second, um, this is the first one I found at the Bins. And then I recently found another one at the Bins. So I don't know if it's the weight of the item that's scaring people off or they just don't know, but this is definitely a good item to pick up. The next item I sold is this uh, 1995 Spiegel Barbie. I got this at a garage sale for $3. I bought all the Barbies at the sale. 
um, paid one price for everything, broke it down to um, like divided it out by the amount and the number of items. And it came to about three bucks. I ended up selling this for $36.99. The buyer was all in for $46.24. So that one's not really big money, but um, it was over my $35 bread and butter. So we went ahead and included that. This grapevine owl. I almost did not list this. I got this in a mystery box. I believe it was a Halloween mystery box. And it was just really, really cute. But I was like, oh, I got to find a box for that. I am sometimes very lazy about shipping things that are bigger or harder to ship. I just like the easy stuff. But I decided, you know what? This is too cool. I am definitely going to list this. I ended up selling this for $40. The buyer was all in for $52.05 and I got that in a thrift store mystery box. The next item are these vintage hard plastic Happy Easter floral picks. And I believe I listed these during a live show also. These are definitely something to be on the lookout for. I got these at a garage sale for $1 and I put them up for auction and they sold for $39.99 plus shipping. The buyer was all in for $53.09. The next item is this Anne Klein um, gold tone leaf link necklace. And I put in the title that, or in the description here, that it does need to be cleaned. Um, I did not want to take the time to do that. I probably could have gotten more, but you can see kind of like right here in between. It's just got some like dirt and stuff. There were also some light scuffs. You can see here where the, kind of the, um, Oh, what do you call it? Plateware, maybe? Is that what it's called? And then if you look at the back, it's just, it could be cleaned up. So I just mentioned that. But really, really cool vintage piece. I ended up selling this for a best offer of $40. The buyer was all in for $47.65. And this one was from my original 344 pounds of jewelry that I purchased, my bulk buy of jewelry. So that was, um, I still have so much of that to list. All right, this item is a vintage Royal Dalton um, Brambley Hedge Winter Plate by Jill Barklam. And again, you guys, it's a breakable. So I did not source this. I was actually gifted this. Uh, Terry from Mindful Recycle, she sent me a box, a mystery box, and it had like clues and I had to try to guess what it was. It was a super fun video. It's over on, it's actually on this channel. And this was one of the items in the box. And when I tell you this box was amazing, she sent me a box of bolos. This ended up selling for $37.50 plus shipping. And again, cost of goods was zero. So Mindful Recycle, Terry, if you are watching, thank you so much again for the awesome gift. And I recently featured um, her channel. I did 50 bolos that sold for $100 or more. So go check out that video. She is a major Bolo finder. Check out her channel if you're not already subscribed. You will be happy you checked her out because you will learn so much. All right, this is it. This is the one I wanted to talk to you guys about. Oh my goodness. So I have had this listed for probably over a year and I had it on local pickup. And I was like, I am not shipping this. And it had the original box. It had some of the original packaging as seen. But I, I just did not want to ship it. I just didn't feel comfortable. And I know that how much money they go for. And I was like, no, I'm not doing it. I probably had 10 different people message me and ask me to ship this thing. And I'm like, no, not doing it. Finally, somebody's like, will you please ship this? I, I've been looking for this item. I really, really want it. And I'm like, oh gosh, I don't want to do it. And they're like, I'll pay you. Actually, I think they told me they would pay me 500 plus shipping, but then they ended up, um, anyway, we ended up working it out to the $431, which I'm very happy with. I picked it up at a thrift store. I don't recall what I paid for it. I want to say it was under $50. Um, so I spent an hour, uh, I had bubble wrapped them lightly knowing that I was probably going to have someone pick it up and I just wanted to protect them a little bit, but you can see right here, like I did not do a great job. It was just a thin layer just to keep them from banging around. They were mostly protected by the cardboard. Okay. 
I spent an hour putting extra bubble wrap around these things, adding paper. Oh my goodness. That all the box almost didn't fit into the box. Then I took it to a place, a local shipping place. And what they did was they put packing peanuts all around it and double boxed it for me. This camel right here, I was like so scared it was not going to make it because those legs and I was like, oh, the tail and the neck. I'm happy to say that the item made it safely. And that was a super, super big sale for me. i uh, really excited about that one. Shipping was a lot. Uh, $350, but um, I had to take it and get it professionally packaged and that's not cheap. And I forget where it was going, but shipping was really high for this. It was a big box. These aren't little uh, figures, you guys. These are, um, let me see if I wrote it in here, 12 inch, 12 inches. So they're big ones and it was really, really cool. All right. The next item is this, the Singamajigs Royal Blue Toy Sing Skinamarink Song. Um, if you've never seen these, you squeeze their belly and their mouth like goes, Rah! anyway, they're really, really cool. I have a video over on my reseller testing Bolo products. If you want to see how annoying this guy is, you can go check that out. Uh, links to my other channels are down in the description. I have Sourcing with Bolo Buddies, Bolo Buddies, and Reseller Testing Bolo products. Thank you, go. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for watching. If you're new here, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel, hit that like button or the thumbs up. And there's going to be some videos popping up here and here and a subscribe and another video down below. So check those out. Check out another video. Um, I also have videos on items not to look for. There are, I think, four out right now. It's a four-part series as of now. I'm going to keep adding to it as I find more items that you should not be sourcing for because you can either get a Vero, um, you can get your item removed from eBay or a suspension. So just bad, bad things. And I typically, um, what I did originally is I posted in my Facebook group for members of my Facebook group to share things that, violations that they've gotten. So it's like things that are currently happening. So I really like that. And again, there's four of those available. So go check out one of those. And thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you at the next one.